Mr. President. State of Louisiana. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to end any quorum call. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise today to speak on the Senate floor for the last time. I'm not generally big on nostalgic reminiscences, but I would like to reflect briefly on what is clearly the greatest honor of my professional life, my 12 years in the U.S. Senate and five and a half years in the U.S. House of Representatives, the enormous honor of serving the people of Louisiana to whom I will always be so deeply indebted. In some ways, it seems like just yesterday that I was on the floor of the U.S. House being sworn in, surrounded by our very young children, except for Jack, that is, he wasn't born yet. I said then, quote, I am honored, humbled, awestruck to stand before you today, close quote. And I stated my simple goal, to become at ease and comfortable as I learn the ways of Congress, as I hopefully become an effective representative and a respected colleague and friend, but never to become so at ease and comfortable that I lose these feelings of honor, of humility, of awe. And believe me, I have them. My very first year in the Senate was a very memorable one. That year, Louisiana was struck by Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. After the initial shock of those cataclysmic events, I realized that my priorities as Louisiana Senator for quite some time would be dominated by the desperate need to rebuild our state, including dramatically improving our hurricane and flood protection and restoring our coastline. Katrina's devastation was hard to imagine, destroying much of southeast Louisiana and coastal Mississippi. Then, less than one month later, Hurricane Rita slammed into southwest Louisiana as another one of the most intense hurricanes in history. I immediately went to work with Senator Landrieu and the rest of our Louisiana delegation, as well as my good friends Thad Cochran, Trent Lott, and others, to secure the necessary disaster recovery assistance and also to make reforms to the Army Corps of Engineers to better protect our families and communities from future natural disasters. Louisiana has continued to face and survive other major disasters, including Hurricane Gustav in August and September 2008, Hurricane Ike in September of that same year, Hurricane Isaac in 2012, the Red River flooding in northern and central Louisiana, and the thousand-year flood event in Greater Baton Rouge and Acadiana this past August. As if all of that weren't enough, in April 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded off the coast of Louisiana, killing 11 men and devastating our coastline. The disaster, followed by the horribly misguided offshore drilling moratorium President Obama put in place, caused economic and environmental chaos in Louisiana. Once again, I immediately went to work with so many others to increase and improve safety measures, to reopen the Gulf of Mexico to energy exploration and put people back to work. We introduced legislation to dedicate a majority of the BP penalties toward restoring coastal ecosystems and economies damaged by the spill. It was an uphill battle to ensure Louisiana was fairly compensated. But we did, and we achieved substantial wins, including passage of that critical Restore Act that I described. During the recovery fight following each of these disasters, I found that the most effective leadership involved communicating clearly and employing solutions based on Louisiana common sense. And what always inspired me, what kept me going, was the unbelievable resilience, faith, and determination of my fellow Louisianians. 
Their strength and their optimism have been oh so powerful reminders of how blessed I have been to serve them. On a host of other important issues, I always sought to further two sets of political values, really modeled after my two favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan and Teddy Roosevelt. I always strove to further the central American tradition of limited government and individual freedom. And I was never afraid to shake things up, to demand needed reforms, to ensure that leaders in Washington serve the American people and not the other way around. I've had the honor of protecting Louisiana's traditions and proud heritage while here in the Senate. Louisianians love the outdoors and want strong environmental conservation and sportsman's policies to maintain that culture. That certainly includes securing the rights afforded to each American by the Second Amendment, which I have fought to do. Louisianans respect the sanctity of life, which has been one of my top priorities while serving in Congress. I've introduced many bills that end taxpayer funding of abortion and abortion mills, and have proudly stood in the defense of life. When it comes to our nation's immigration policies, I've been an advocate for targeted reforms that fix the immigration crisis, starting with border security and enforcing the immigration laws already on the books. I fought President Obama's unconstitutional attempts to implement executive amnesty, which only encourages more Im immigrants to come here illegally and insults the millions of fine immigrants who do follow U.S. law. I was also the first to introduce legislation in 2007 to end dangerous sanctuary city policies and have continued to do so each Congress since. I've also been critical of too big to fail in the banking sector and have found banking reform to be an area in which Republicans can absolutely find common ground with Democrats. That's where I found success in passing into law specific measures that restrict too big to fail and taxpayer funded bailouts. Also during my time in Congress, I've introduced several important government reform bills so we can be get back to the best traditions of our democracy, which includes electing citizen legislature, legislators, making sure they don't make themselves into a separate ruling class, and advocating for term limits so individuals don't remain in office for an eternity. Americans of all backgrounds think Washington is on a different planet, and members of Congress just don't get it. That's why I fought to end Congress, Congress's automatic pay raises each year. I first introduced that language in 2009, and the raises have been successfully blocked each year since. Congress can only be an effective representative body when it lives under the same laws it imposes on the rest of the country. And one major way to support that is through term limits. When I was a member of the Louisiana State Legislature, I was successful in establishing legislative term limits there. And I've authored the leading term limits measure for Congress here, as well as imposing it on myself. I fought for common sense legislation that helps all Americans have access to high quality and affordable health care. That includes the work to dismantle Obamacare and replace it with patient-centered health care reform, which I'm very hopeful the incoming Trump administration will achieve. And in the meantime, I've been fighting to end Washington's exemption from Obamacare an illegal Obama administration executive order that allows Washington elites to avoid the most inconvenient, expensive aspects of the Affordable Care Act by giving themselves taxpayer-subsidized health care through an exchange meant solely for small businesses. Also in the health care arena, I was able to pass the bipartisan Steve Gleason Act of 2015 into law. It provided immediate relief for patients who have been denied access to life-saving and life-altering medical equipment. 
It was about a Medicare policy change in 2014 that we had to reverse. Our bill allowed these patients to have access to medical equipment that truly empowers them, that is a true lifeline, changes their lives absolutely for the better. And I've also fought against the large drug manufacturing lobby to allow for reimportation of safe and approved prescription medicine from other countries, which gives patients especially our seniors, relief from rising health care costs. I've been honored to serve in the Senate in additional ways as well, including as a top Republican on the Environment and Public Works Committee, and most recently as chair of the Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. And I'm very proud to say that we've accomplished so many of our goals in those two roles. On EPW, we worked in a bipartisan fashion to pass several major pieces of legislation, including the Water Resources and Development Act of 2007 and the even more significant WERDA of 2014, several reauthorizations of the Highway Bill, the bipartisan and historic rewrite of the 40-year-old Toxic Substances Control Act, which began as conversations between Senator Frank Lautenberg and myself, a partnership which Senator Tom Udall continued after Frank's unfortunate passing. We were also able to hold the administration accountable by conducting investigations into some outright corruption within the Obama EPA. And we advanced key transparency initiatives that shed light on the government's attempts to implement policies that were not based on sound science or strategic needs. As chair of the Small Business Committee, I've been advocating to make sure the voices and concerns of small business owners across the country are heard in Washington. We've held 23 hearings here, 18 field hearings, numerous roundtable discussions, hearing testimony from over 175 witnesses, usually about the disastrous negative effects of Obama policies like the New Waters of the United States rule, key and disastrous, disastrous effects on small businesses and job creators and their employees. At the very same time, we found common ground with Ranking Member Shaheen and other Democrats on the committee. During my tenure as chair, we've passed 32 bipartisan bills out of the committee, which is 22 more than my predecessors did over a much longer period. And eight of our bills have passed through the entire legislative process and been signed into law. These accomplishments are but a fraction of the years of hard work my staff and I have dedicated to the people of Louisiana and indeed the American people. I've worked hard to be a champion for them because the government should serve the taxpayer and not the other way around. And that includes by working hard to stay in touch through 398 town hall meetings, at least five in each parish of Louisiana through 231 telephone town halls, and through active, energetic casework and constituent service. But clearly, what I will treasure most about my service here is the people I've been honored to serve with. My colleagues, including my fellow Louisianian Senator Bill Cassidy, mentors, like former Senator Rick Santorum and Senator Jeff Sessions, and most especially each of the dedicated people who have been part of Team Vitter. I've come to the Senate floor several times this year to thank key departing staff members. That's for a very simple reason. My staff has been the key ingredient, the key, to every success we've enjoyed together in public service. Wendy and I consider them a part of the family. I really, truly want to thank my staff again for their tireless, dedicated service to Louisiana. I am so very grateful. Wendy joins me in that. 
and I want to specifically recognize some of our leaders. My Chief of Staff, Luke Bowler. My Legislative Director, Chris Stanley. My wonderful Finance Director, Courtney Guastella. Our State Director, Chip Layton. And Committee Staff Director, Meredith West. Our Grants Coordinator, Brenda Moore. My Media Head, John Brabender and Senior Infrastructure Policy Advisor, Charles Brittingham. My Senior Economic Advisor, David Stokes. Campaign Treasurer, Will Vanderbrook. And Communications Director, Cheyenne Klotz. I know of a few of our other former senior staff members are here too or are watching, like Mac Abrams and Joel DeGrado, Brian Zumwalt, Travis Johnson, and Michael Wong. Last and obviously not least is my beloved family. My five wonderful brothers and sisters, our children, their children, the extended family led by the ultimate leader of Team Vitter, my wife Wendy. I can never thank them enough and certainly I can never, ever thank Wendy enough. Through it all, Wendy has been so enormously patient and supportive and understanding, not to mention being the life of every Team Vitter party, leading the rounds, rounds plural, of fireball shots. She and our daughter Lees are in the gallery today, and I thank them and Sophie and Ari and Jack for decades of love and support. Lee's up there was in my arms as a two-year-old when I was first sworn into the U.S. House of Representatives and made those previously quoted remarks, quote, I am honored, humbled, awestruck to stand before you, close quote. She has changed some, but as I said at the beginning of my reflections, those feelings certainly have not. So I'd like to close as I did that day in the House over 17 years ago, and that's simply by recognizing the wonderful, loving forces that have brought me here today. God, family, led by my parents up above, and my wife, Wendy, staff and friends, and of course, the wonderful, wonderful people of Louisiana. They are here with me today. They are here with me always. And I thank them from the depths of my heart. Mr. President, for the last time, I yield the floor.